The person I chose for this project is someone I first met in Hong Kong last year, when I was studying there as an exchange student. She's going to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Tiffany from Australia. As you understood, her name is Tiffany and she is Australian. However, her mother is from Malaysia and her dad from Hong Kong. That's why in the second video, she's introducing herself in Cantonese. She is currently completing a double degree in marketing and law in Australia. But after spending one semester in Hong Kong, she still had one full term before going back to university in Australia. That's why she decided to come to Europe. First, she stayed in Budapest in order to pass a certificate that will allow her to teach English. Once she did it, she decided to travel around Europe and visit as much as she could. In each city she was going, she tried to contact someone she knew. And that's what she did when she came to Lyon. Even though she has a double nationality, Hong Kong and Australian, I am going to talk about the stereotype I have about Australians, as it is the country that defines her the most. First, about Australia, I would say that we commonly think that it is a dangerous country with deadly animals everywhere. Second, about Australians, they have a relaxed behavior and they all surf. They also have a strange accent compared to Americans or British people and have their own slang. The first time we met in France was in front of my door. She was staying for a week, so we had plenty of time to discuss about what we were going to do. The first thing we decided to do is to cook dumplings, which is a dish that we used to eat in Hong Kong. On another day, we decided to visit the city. First, we went up to Fourvière, and then we went down by foot through the theatres until Violion. I'm going to tell you what I learned during the time I spent with Tiffany. First, how to cook dumplings, of course. Then, I learned some words that Australians say differently. For instance, Afternoon is avo, McDonald's is macas, and barbecue is barbie. I learned as well that Australians often use the word mate when speaking to someone. Finally, Australia is not as dangerous as people could think. Or maybe if you live in the city at least. The first difference is obvious. It is about the language. Hers is English and mine is French. What I found surprising is that she's really at ease speaking with people, even if it is in English and they might not understand. She's very open to conversation and very friendly and tactile when talking to a stranger. Concerning the similarities, I found one, which is the fact of giving a gift after someone invited you at his home. In fact, before coming to Lyon, she was in a family in Holland and she sent them a gift to thank them for their hospitality. That's what we do in France when someone invites us at his home. The model I used is the whole and whole model, but I only focused on two of the cultural dimensions, which are communication context and space. First, Australians use a low context communication, which applies as well to Tiffany. A low context culture means that the communicative messages lie in the verbal messages. In fact, when we were visiting the city, she didn't hesitate to talk directly and to be extremely expressive when discovering the part of the city. After thinking about that, I thought about the fact that Australians are really modest people First, they don't care about being offended and that's why they say directly what they want to say with no indirect message. Even though the French culture is considered as a high context culture, we didn't have any problem to communicate and get along together.
Concerning the definition of personal space, I would say that it is smaller in Australia than in France, if I compare to what I observe with Tiffany. In fact, as she was very friendly to me or anyone we could meet, I noticed that she was as a closer in terms of space of the person she communicated with. I think French also don't need a large personal space. However, it seems that we are more reserved upon first meeting compared to Australians. To add something on the less cultural dimension of a whole and whole model, I can say that Australian culture is a monochronic culture. However, I would say that Tiffany is more a polychronic person. In fact, concerning her vision of time, she doesn't mind being late. The benefits of this model is that I could analyze aspects that I didn't even think about when meeting someone from another culture for the first time. I can also better understand the differences that are between Australians and French people. Concerning the limits, we can say that there are different levels of culture, but this model doesn't take this into account. In addition, many people have parents that have different cultures and grew up in different countries than their parents' origins, just like Tiffany. That's why their own culture is a mix of different cultures and it is almost impossible to assimilate them totally to a culture of one single country.